Aha! Shit. Well, my channel has just reached 500 subscribers, and I'm pretty damn happy about it. I feel like my channel is a moderate success. Hey, I mean, I'm making money from it. I'm making, well, 16,000 views a week, and 40, $40 a week, too. And I only make $100 a week from McDonald's, so pretty soon I might be able to quit my job and just go straight for uh, doing YouTube videos. Who knows? But anyway, I want to I want to thank you guys for, well, all the views and and just all the awesomeness. And I've run out of my cachet of things I was going to say. Well, anyway, remember the uh, camcorder I got at the Jacksonville Steam Festival? This is it. And I, t I took it apart. I filmed an entire video about it, and well, quite frankly, it was un it's, it's, it was underwhelming. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna really edit that video. There's not not much to edit. But I did end up, end up getting a color viewfinder, which run, which will probably run off nine volts, and it'll probably use NTSC. Now most of these wires are most likely for just the buttons, and so you only have like two for power and two for the video signal, and you can have your color screen, which actually that screen itself is only a half inch wide inside of there. So that's pretty awesome. And we also have this. This is the main body of it with the camera attached to it. Now, what's interesting is th this is made in 1998, and I have like nine of these cameras so far. And this is the camera VCR off mode switch. And that does is that moves that pin in there, and that manually um, opens up the shutter, I think. So here's the lens system, and on the back of here, you can take off this shield. We can see there's a circuit board that's connected to the back of the lens system. Now this entire lens system, it, it's kind of freestanding on like rubber bushings or whatever. And now I, I took off the screws, and you can see back here, this is the CCD chip or whatever. That's weird, it's blue. But anyway, one actual interesting method you can use these for is to copy film. Like for instance, I had one camera that I took apart, and I just had the CCD chip sitting down, and I put a, um, oh no, it was a, it was a webcam, that's what it was, and I put a piece of 8mm home film over it, and I would take a screenshot, move it one frame, take a screenshot, and I could take a high definition image of each frame on the film, and that'd be a, that was a nice way to copy the film over, and then you could, then you could reanimate it back with, um, oh, there's several good programs for it, for animation or whatever. But then we have our LCD screen, which goes this way. It's hinged also. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't really receive NTSC input, I don't think. So it's, I don't know if it's very useful, at least for my amount of knowledge about them. So, oh well. So here we have the CCD chip and everything, which is pretty cool. I really like that little piece of blue glass. Now unfortunately you can't see through this system even with the CCD chip off because the shutter is still closed or whatever. So let's slowly take it apart and see what we can uh, see what it looks like as we take it apart. Nice. It's a cool little servo motor. Another one. So, oh, weird. Didn't mean to rip off the back of the motor. <laughs> well, that's kind of cool. You can see inside the motor. And it looks like it probably is not a, a stepper motor then. It's probably just a, a, a simple DC motor. Then they have these these other little um, detector circuits to, uh, to calibrate it and keep it uh, going in, in, so it doesn't get out of whack. A screw to hold those these pieces together. Oh, we're in like fun. Or <laughs> whatever. That's pretty cool. Another piece. Ah, there's the shutter. 
Okay, so evidently that wasn't the motor for like focus or anything. That was the motor for controlling the shutter. Oh, that's cool. It's a double shutter type thing. There's one shutter frame right here, and there's another sh shutter frame behind it, and they're made to where this one will go this way and that one will go that way. So when I push it down, you can see they move away from each other. And I think this is like a um, a slightly transparent plastic material there. That's pretty cool. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. There's a little like rocker arm down here. That's how they control both both of the uh, motions at once. Huh, you learn something new every day. Whoa. That's cool. I didn't expect those metal rods to be in there. Pretty nice magnification, too. I might want to modify this into like a micro or micro micro zoom lens because I already got a micro zoom feature on this, but this would be even more micro. <laughs> then on the main board, we see they have some fairly heavy duty shielding over whatever this is. It's weird. Oh well. And of course, on this side, we have the v VHS C. Uh, tape assembly thing. I'm going to wind up the tape and whatnot. This is just so mind-boggling that they were able to fit not only an entire VCR but an entire camera system in here. Because like this is a VCR technology from like 15 or 16 years before 1982. And so going from that to that in less than 20 years is a pretty big step up in technology. I wonder how small we could get a VCR uh, today. Actually, to be honest, we could probably get one where it would just play the tape while it's still inside of the uh, the cassette. They would just wind up the cassette and have like a linear read-write head that would be able to read it all. <laughs> Here's a better cutaway view of the read-write head. And these things make awesome um, bearings. Like this one. I plan on using this one for something someday. Just, they're so smoothly rotating. So I was able to use a few neat little lenses and stuff from that. The rest will just go into a box for storage. But now on to more important things. Cleaning up my room. I've been... I, okay, I, I really don't have hardly any room in my room at all. And so it all, I've kind of pushed it all onto shelves. And one of the things is I have a lot of boxes underneath my bed just filled with stuff. Most of the stuff I don't exactly even use. Oh, that, that's, that's ColecoVision games. Never mind that. I don't have to worry about that. The shit you find. Didn't even know I owned one of these. Ooh! SCSI cable. Those are hard to find. Hey, this is 30 volts. Oh, I got a project idea, idea for that. What the hell? Wow. That company is actually called Skynet. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I think it wasn't Skynet the, the company that made the Terminators and Terminator series. I don't know. Whatever. Still, it's just kind of funny. It's like seeing a a, a, a modem with the name U.S. Robotics because U.S. Robotics was the company that made the robots and iRobot. That well, looks like I got an entire box clean. I picked these up at the 2012 Fall Festival. They were with a bunch of radio equipment. They look pretty... They look pretty badass. Well, another box cleaned, and I have evidently have a bigger obsession over trackballs than I originally thought. Because 
I mean, I have, I already came across two of them. I just recently bought a bunch more, and I use one every day for the past like eight years on my main computer. Hell, whenever I wore out my first one, I actually had to go on, uh, I had to go on to eBay and find an exact copy, otherwise it wouldn't be the same. I just love this track, man, so much. It's so awesome. You can do anything with it. It's odd. I wonder why a lot of people use use mice instead of trackballs. But anyway, now we have the box empty. Let's make it for VHS tapes because I have a crap load of VHS tapes. Now, as you probably don't know, I collect uh, recordable VHS tape types, and the favorite ones I found are these Polaroid ones, the Polaroid T120s with this kind of case. Not this kind though. This kind. Can you tell the difference? It's only slight differences, but actually the reason why I like this one so much is because the card uh, cardboard is like, like really, really thick cardstock. I love this stuff. It just feels so strong and sturdy. Whereas, I, whereas this stuff right here, it's a lot thinner. It's, it's, it's the same type of pressed uh, board, but it's a lot thinner and it just doesn't feel right. I feel the same at least. Not counting it, it has a lot more stuff on the back and whatnot. And th these ones, they just have, they're very clean looking. I think these are from like 1992, 1993, and I've only found three of these. But I know of two other people that have them in their collection, like in their home movie collection and whatnot. Well, here's a little box of goodies. Got four PlayStation 1s, a uh, graphics card, an Atari 2600 that doesn't work. And a Super Nintendo. These things are always... Game consoles are always so nice to have. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out how to manage my space. Because whenever I build my shed, I won't have to worry about stuff too much. There we go. Awesome. And we got more room down there. Got my laser disc thing hooked up. It's kind of weird to have stuff hooked up to my TV because I have it all sitting around it, but I don't actually have anything hooked up usually. Awesome. So back to what I was actually wanting to film in the first place. I, I went to the Salvation Army store and I got a bunch of neat stuff for really cheap. Here we have a 1952 Sunbeam T20B toaster. Now this is an iconic piece of kitchen hardware. Unfortunately it's been painted horribly by someone with a can of spray paint, but you can tell that I scratched some of it off and you can tell that it, the, the chrome is still underneath that. So that'll be a nice project video. We can take it apart, we can look inside of it, see how it works, because this is a fully automatic toaster oven, a toaster. You put the bread in, it goes down, and then, it, and then when it's done it slowly comes back up. Nothing to activate it, nothing to turn on. The only meter is the, uh, the cook duration and how or how hot it is how much you wanted it to be toasted now if we open up in the bottom we can see it says September 19th 1952 and unfortunately it all looks okay except for this one electrode right here it's all kind of bent and warped out of shape now it might be perfectly fine or it might not be but either way it'll be a nice video we can take it apart maybe even have to make a new electrode for it but I'm really curious to see how it actually works on the inside because it works much differently to a lot of the toaster, uh, toasters I've seen. Next we have a 1947 Singer hand vacuum cleaner. Now this was only five dollars. Once again an awesome uh, an awesome purchase and it doesn't work but it wouldn't be too hard to fix. That should, be, that should make an awesome repair video. Not counting, I don't have a vacuum cleaner, and I have a lot of crap laying around, so it'd be nice to be able to vacuum stuff up. It just has a really awesome look to it. And there's a label on the bottom for stuff. 170 watts, volts 115, uh, 115 uh, the Singer Manufacturing Company, made in New Jersey. The motor is a model number H9. Very simple to operate. You have that. And this is your waste bag, or whatever it's called. Then I picked up this for $2. It is a Singer Educational Audio Study Mate thing. 
whatever it whatever that means basically you would it's meant for in schools where you put a cassette tape in then you have a roll of film and instead of having it's it's like a hybrid in between having only audio and full motion video because you, you 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 play the tape and then you have your images and it projects the images onto the screen so it's like a portable slide projector with audio now this unit is from the 1970s and in the back it has a uh, room for two audio cassettes and two rolls of film so that's pretty nice a little nice little portable unit for teaching things to kids or whatever and you just have a regular light bulb that goes in there and lastly i ran by roll king and traded a dead battery for a battery that was pretty much brand new and one thing i've noticed with ac duckle batteries is they never never actually say with a timestamp when they were made at least not very openly because pretty much every other battery i've seen they always have a little round sticker that says like 508 meaning may of 08 but this one has well i was always confused by they had copyright 1995 on all their stickers so i thought uh, is that from 1995 but actually on this one it actually says january of 08 in tiny print on the sticker so that's pretty annoying so yeah as long as i get off my bum and start making more videos i'll have plenty more stuff to make videos about well, not really the battery, because I got, I got too many va battery videos as it is right now. But now the toaster, now that's pretty awesome. And the vacuum cleaner. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. It's very weird. I'm celebrating 500 subscribers, and already I'm at like 530. What, what's going on? Why am I getting so many subscri uh, subscriptions? But, I mean, it, it, it's welcome. But yeah, it's weird. See ya.